Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of People on the Move, a Cargomatic podcast. I'm Weston Labar, Chief Spokesperson for Cargomatic, and I'm super excited to have with me today Tyler Reeb. He's the new Interim Executive Director for the Center of International Trade and Transportation at the California State University, Long Beach. Tyler, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Weston. For those of you who don't know, CITT hosts a town hall. They work with their Policy and Steering Committee, which is a group of industry experts, to frame what they should be discussing, who should potentially be speakers on the panel. And this year, uh, you had what I thought was a really great discussion around a very important topic, which is uh, decarbonization, ESG, sustainability, whatever we want to call it. It's the movement to lowering emissions uh, related to the supply chain. And uh, you had a very diverse group of panelists. Talk a little bit about some of the key takeaways from the town hall, because uh, I've heard nothing but great feedback as to the content and, and moving forward, you know, the town hall is a great place for people to get information about key uh, movements going on in the industry that everybody's going to feel the impacts of. Yeah, uh, I learned a ton from this effort. Uh, what I learned from the town hall is, number one, it's not going to be any one technology. I think most folks in the industry already knew that. The other thing that I learned is that there's an interesting coalescing of opinions between organized labor, um, industry partners, traditional energy companies, and a good number of researchers who are realizing that there's a difference between scientific method and magical thinking. And some deadlines are arbitrary and they don't need to be deadlines. And in some cases, if you can get to 98.5, percent zero emission and in doing so bring the whole team with you you might get to zero quicker than using draconian standards that call for only green hydrogen and only zero emission everything because the if you look at the economics behind it it could cost a, a lot more zeros it, at the end right now our california was selected for the arches project which i'm i'm part of that discussion that's potentially $1.2 billion coming into what will probably be the hub based right here in you know, the San Pedro Bay area. And um, in order- Can you explain to- a little bit so the listeners know what the Arches project is exactly? Yeah, happy to. Uh, I, I think just connecting to what you're saying, Weston, is that battery electric is improving, uh, but what we're seeing basically right now is that if batteries are not going to be a solution for a lot of long haul trucks and uh, perhaps heavy rail and some of the bigger stuff. This I think explains why the Department of Energy is rolling out the big bucks to explore this. Uh, the hub idea uh, was competitive and I think in total 37 uh, locations, seven or eight were selected around the country, uh, California being one of them. The name of the California project is the Arches Project. And it's to be determined. We're still figuring out how this is going to roll out. We do know that key members of what are called the CSU-5, the CSUs based here in LA County, and they usually add Fullerton, so CSU-5 plus one, are going to work together to develop the various workforce development elements and test some of uh, the fuel cell stuff up at Cal State LA. Next year and moving forward, we're going to see a very rapid escalation of discussions of potential investments in technologies that are going to cost a lot of money. We, we also are talking about the Port of Long Beach becoming a producer of the world's largest floating windmills. So pure wind. So, so stay tuned for that one. Um, I'm open to any and all of it. My only real concern is that we're bringing in scientific method. We're bringing in our best economists. We're studying what scalability looks like. So it's actually doable. And I think that's what the town hall, I think, was really helpful in identifying. I think it was also helpful in identifying that there are different ways to capture our emissions. There are technologies right now where we can capture uh, in more traditional uh, refineries and things of that nature, um, capture all of the carbon. And rather than letting it go into the atmosphere, treating our atmosphere like a sewer through carbon capture storage, we can actually put this back on the ground. If you really want to reduce emissions, you want people to come through the ports of LA Long Beach because they're the cleanest ports 
um, and, and they provide more jobs that way. I mean, it's, it's really a win-win. What you don't want to do if you're a true climate change uh, enthusiast is you don't want them going to ports where they don't have truck standards. They don't have plug-in ship standards. They don't have all of these different uh, you know, standards that help reduce the emissions of the supply chain. And that's the irony of it is we, we continue to hit the uh, fast forward button uh, as opposed to actually allowing the movie to play out. Um, but while, we, while we're a leader, uh, we may actually be driving freight elsewhere um, as part of our efforts to continue to double down on our environmental stewardship. And, you know, when we look at sustainability, it's really a, a three-pronged stool. It is uh, operational sustainability. Why are we not talking about being more efficient with the current uh, technology that we have in a way to reduce emissions? Uh, that's something that we take very seriously at Cargomatic, because obviously the more efficient we are, uh, the better it is for our customers, the better it is for uh, for our company, but the better it is for the environment. And that's the first of, of the stool legs. This, the second is economic sustainability. There's the old saying that you must do well to do good, meaning you, you have to have uh, resources uh, to be able to invest in uh, a cleaner supply chain. And uh, we firmly believe that uh, whatever is done that hurts the industry participants or makes it harder for them to be uh, a good steward of the environment while they are operating is not in the best interest of uh, the supply chain or the region as a whole. And then, and then the third one is the technology, right? Uh, where there is available technology that you can integrate into your fleet, into your supply chain solutions, uh, then you should definitely do it.